Hi everyone, my name is Mahsa Ebdekhai and I'm going to talk about the majority problem in population protocols. This is a joint work with David Doty, Lejek Gazianiak, Eric Silverson, Jakov Stokowiak and Peshama Kronansky. In this talk, first we will learn about the model through some examples. Then I switch to talking about an exciting problem called the exact majority. There are two keywords here, population and protocol, and I will define both of them shortly. A population is a set of identical and anonymous entities that we call agents. The agents communicate through random pairwise interactions. In every interaction, a random scheduler selects another pair of agents independently and uniformly at random. A protocol tells the agents what to do if selected. The agents observe the state of the other one and follow the rules of the protocol to update their own state. Here is an example of a protocol with a single transition. It consists of a pair of states as input and as output. If we run the protocol on this example, nothing happens, because in this configuration, there is no agent in state i. But if we start in a configuration with at least one agent in state i, the population can apply the rule. Not all the interactions are going to change the state of the agents. For example, if two agents in state s interact, since there is no rule in the protocol, nothing happens and none of the agents change the states. We call this a null interaction. Finally, by following this simple protocol, with at least one agent in the I state, we eventually reach a configuration that every agent in the population is also in state I. Formally speaking, a population consists of these identical and anonymous agents that interact through random pairwise interactions, with no control over whom they interact. A protocol defines the rules for the agent's interactions. It consists of a set of states that shows how much memory each agent must have, and also specifies a set of valid initial configurations, and finally, a set of interactions. As an example, we went over this protocol called epidemic that spreads the information among the population. Usually, we don't mention the null interactions, but I put them here in gray for the sake of this talk. Similar to all models of computation, in population protocols, we are interested in fast protocols that, that use the minimum amount of memory. The memory usage for this specific example is two states. But how much time do they take to fully spread the epidemic? We can calculate the expected number of interactions until all agents receive the epidemic. For example, when there are I agents infected, the probability of getting a new infected agent in the subsequence of interaction is i times n minus i over n choose 2. And the expected value is the reciprocal of it. By taking a sum over all values of i, we can show that the expected number of interactions to infect all agents is n log n. But n log n is not the time complexity. We define time as the number of interactions divided by the population size. Roughly speaking, giving each agent one interaction per unit of time. So the time complexity is actually log n. Now that we learned about the model, it's time to talk about the majority problem. But what is the majority problem? Starting in a configuration that every agent has a vote, either A or B, we want the agents to determine if there are more A's, more B's, or even if it's a tie. Let's try to develop a protocol to solve the majority problem. A natural rule can be if two agents with different opinion interact, both should update to a neutral state. Although this protocol will eventually remove all the minority agents with probability 1, it doesn't converge to a consensus. These neutral agents don't know if the majority vote was A or B. So let's inform the rest of the population by epidemic. To get a better intuition, we can look at the simulation results from the Peregrine simulator. This protocol is working for this specific example, but actually there are some initial configurations in which the result is incorrect. For example, if the initial gap between A and B is large, then the protocol is correct with high probability. But if the initial gap between A and B is small, then the probability is close to one half that it gets, it, that it gets the answer wrong. This is because every agent converted to having a vote can also convert another agent so it doesn't preserve the initial gap. We can fix that issue by adding one extra bit. The first three rules are similar to the previous protocol, but with the change that if an agent was cancelled and now gets a vote, the vote is weak, and it's represented by a lowercase a and b. Agents with weak opinion cannot change another agent's opinion. 
So with these rules, we preserve the initial gap between the uppercase A and Bs. And a simulation can provide better emphasis on the differences with the previous protocol. For example, we can observe that it takes a bit longer to wipe out the minority agents, but eventually it happens. I should also mention that the population protocol model is slightly different from this geometric version shown in Prager and contains only independent random pairs of agents. Although these protocols solve the majority problem, both are not optimal in some senses. The first one works fast and takes log and time with high probability if the initial gap between agents in state A and B is large, but otherwise it doesn't. More concretely, if it's less than the square root of n, there's one half chance that it gets it wrong. On the other hand, the second protocol converges correctly to the majority from any initial configuration, but it takes exponentially slower than log n time. Its probability of correctness is 1, and it works even if the gap between A and B is constant, or even if it's 0. Since 2004, many researchers have considered the majority problem in population protocols. In this chart, the x-axis shows the state complexity, the y-axis shows the time complexity, and the blue area represents the impossible region. It was a long existing open question if a protocol exists that solves the exact majority problem in log n time while using log n states. Our protocol closes this gap. Note that log n time is the fastest to propagate a signal through a population, because at each interaction, we're selecting two agents at a time. But for now, let's assume we're picking only one. This would be exactly a coupon collector problem. How many interactions do we need to sample each agent once is a log n which is equivalent to log n time. So log n is optimal for almost any problem you want to solve, including the majority. Most of the majority protocols work in synchronized hours of cancel and split. Earlier, I said population protocols is an unsynchronized model of computation. In each time step, we select two agents to interact. So what do we mean by synchronized? We can add synchronization with the appropriate protocol. So we will create a synchronization primitive so that the agents, even though they're not naturally synchronized, perform in a synchronized manner. There is a protocol called leaderless phase clock in which each agent has a field called an hour and another field called a minute. And they're both initially set to zero. We can write the rules with the same notation as before, but for better understanding, I use pseudocode. What are they doing with these fields? On every interaction, one of the agents increments its minute. The agents increment the minute up to 4 log n, and then, when it gets there, they increment the hour and set the minute back to 0. All these agents are counting up, and some agents increment their minute faster than others. But we can prove by chain of bound that with high probability, even the fastest agent won't hit the threshold until at least 2 log n time has passed. So that's the main idea behind the synchronization of these agents. Let's get back to the majority. Let's look at two types of essential reactions. First, when two agents with opposite opinions meet, they both go to neutral. And we call this a cancel reaction. We saw this reaction in the very first protocols too. Another important reaction happens when an opinionated agent meets a neutral one and distributes its opinion. We call that split. Now we will add the previous synchronization scheme to do cancel and split reactions in an orderly manner. Here, we are showing an example of a population of size 9 with this initial configuration. We want to compute the majority. We also use integer values to show how strong is one's opinion and we call them bias. So the state of the agents will be these rational numbers, negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 1 fourth, positive 1, positive 1 half, and 1 fourth, and so on, plus 0, which shows the bias of a neutral agent. Now a cancel happens when two agents with the sum of the biases equal to zero interact. And split happens if an agent interacts with zero, and they give half of their bias to a neutral agent. Both cancel and split reactions preserve the sum of the biases across the population. With the synchronization, we limit the agents who split at most once during each hour, because certain split reactions are not allowed before a specific hour. Thus, at the end of hour 1, the agent's absolute bias value is at most 1 half. And by the end of hour 2, the agent's absolute bias value will be at most 1 fourth. In general, 
by the end of our i, the agent's absolute bias value will be at most 1 over 2 to the i. With this protocol, the red agents eventually consume the blue ones and the population converge to the majority. To give you some intuition, note that the cancer reaction goal is creating enough of these neutral agents to help the splits, so that all the remaining agents can do a split in the next hour. If this happens, if all the remaining opinionated agents can split, then each successful hour of cancel and split will, will double the difference between the number of majority and minority agents. So even if the agents start with a gap of 1, if the gap gets doubled at each hour, it will take about log n hours to make a linear gap. We can look more closely at the simulation of the fully synchronized protocol that I described. This is a simulation of 10 to the 9 agents with majority of red. T shows the neutral. The x-axis shows log of the bias values, and we start with an almost equal amount of each vote and see how it goes. We can see that only two consecutive hours appear simultaneously. And in the end, we have nothing but reds. This takes log n hours of cancel and split, each having log n time, which is equal to a total of log n squared time. How can we make this faster? We want to get down to log n time complexity. The fundamental question is to ask if synchronization is even necessary. For example, we could allow all the cancel and splits to happen simultaneously. So let's try it. As we see in this simulation, with no synchronization scheme, all the bias values appear quickly in log n time. Since we allow all the splits to happen, they will quickly consume the neutral agents, which slows down the protocol. Because for the next non-null interaction, we should wait for the scheduler to pick two agents with the same bias value to cancel. Even if we continue the computation, the agents are not guaranteed to converge to one vote. As you see, the agents are now stuck in a configuration with no more neutral agents. And for each bias value, it's either blue or red. So they cannot even cancel. So the bias has preserved, but there are more blue agents if we look at the counts. That means the agents are not even close to properly computing majority. Since we started with more red agents, so even allowing cancels between different biases would not work at this point. To summarize what we have talked so far, with full synchronization, we get a protocol that is too slow. And without the synchronization, the protocol is incorrect. So we suggest partial synchronization, with hours that each takes constant time, but still taking log n hours, so a total of log n time. That is both fast and correct. So what are the rules of our clock? Every agent starts with minute and hour equal to zero. When two agents with the same minute value i interact, one of them increments its minute. We call this reaction drip. So once there are a lot of agents holding the same minute value, a drip happens. Then the agents broadcast a maximum minute by the epidemic. A new maximum minute will appear in constant unit of time with these two rules. Because of the dripping reaction, a small constant fraction of agents move to the next minute before most agents catch up. Now, we combine constant minutes, for example 5, into an hour. So the agents spend constant time per hour. We know that the epidemic part takes log n time to reach out the whole population. So we cannot expect that all agents are synchronized together, but most agents in the population are synchronized. And we're maintaining hours of constant time each which contrasts with the existing synchronization schemes in population protocols that maintain hours of log n time each. We can also look at a simulation of our majority protocol with this partial synchronization and see how the agent's biases change over time. We kept the exact cancel and split rules, but the hours move much faster now. As you observed, the benefit of partial synchrony is its time optimality. Still, we lost perfect cancelling, since now we have more than one bias value among the population at any time. As a result, the ending configuration looks like this. Most agents have three bias values, but we still have agents with biases smaller or bigger than this. And we have minorities on both sides. Remember that in this example, red is the majority. So why are there not many minorities in the middle? 
Well, since there are a lot of majority agents there, they got rid of the minorities with cancer reaction. We haven't solved the entire problem yet, but this is our protocol's basic idea, to get here and then clean up the leftover minorities. Our entire protocol computes the majority in multiple phases. The constant resolution clock that I just described ends in a configuration with both minority and majority agents present. Even though most of the agents know that the majority vote is red, not all of them knows that. Remember that this is a log plot and there are many majority agents here. So in the remaining phases, we focus on eliminating the remaining blue minorities while preserving the invariant of the biases sum to keep probability one correctness. Our first target is to eliminate the minorities who have larger bias values. Then we reach the point that only minorities with medium and small biases are left. So our second and third targets will be these two blue groups. Before eliminating the minorities, I should talk about the state complexity of our protocol. Remember that we don't measure memory in population protocols in terms of how many bits the agents are using, but instead how many states they require, which is exponentially more expensive than the number of bits. So with two separate fields that each can have log n different values, the total number of states is not log n, but, but it is log n squared. So we use a well-known trick called population splitting to allow the agents to keep track of both bias and minute values. Now, a single agent doesn't need to carry all the information. One subpopulation follows the rules of the phase clock and another subpopulations, subpopulation are doing the cancel and squeeze reactions for the majority protocol. So the clock agents tell the main agents the current hour and the main agents do the splitting based on that. Why is this working? Because if we guarantee that there are linear agents in each subpopulation, the interaction between these two groups will happen in constant time. So we split the population into main clock and also reserve agents at the beginning of our protocol. The reserve agents are extra neutral agents whose whole goal is to help agents split with the leftover minorities with large biases. Once they're gone, we move on to the next phase to remove the minorities with medium bias value. At this point, all the minority agents are at these three levels or below them. So we allow the cancel reactions to happen again. These reactions happen everywhere, especially in these three levels. But cancel reactions for these levels are not fast. So how should we get rid of these minorities? We have a lot of majority with biases that are strictly higher than the bias of the minorities. How can we use this fact and somehow generalize the cancer rules? In our normal cancer reactions, two agents with the same absolute bias value but opposite signs can cancel each other. But in the case of large memory, the agents can do cancellation with any two numbers and put the sum only in one of them. This idea actually works but requires too much memory. But we can achieve something similar with limited states if the agents stored only an approximation of the sum. So in both of these examples that the sum is a rational number between negative one half and negative one fourth, we can allow the agents to avoid keeping the actual value, but keep the interval as an approximation. We prevent them from any further cancelling so that the majority computation remains correct. With this trick, the majority can safely consume the leftover minorities without using extra states. This last trick doesn't preserve the value of the sum of the biases, but still it preserves its sign. And that's enough to say which vote was the majority. Our entire majority protocol takes log n time using log n states and converges to the majority with probability one correctness. Moreover, if the initial difference between the agents in state A and B is zero, the protocol correctly reports tie. We also introduced the fixed resolution phase clock that maintains hours of constant time in the population. This clock could be a useful primitive for solving other problems. Finally, our protocol is not uniform, meaning that the agents know the value of log n in advance. We can remove this assumption by adding extra factor of log log n states to the state complex complexity. But it is still open if there is a uniform protocol with both log n time and log n states. Finally, as a generalization of the majority, we're curious about solving the parity problem. It is not known if we can have a polylog and time protocol for the parity problem, assuming we use non-constant number of states.
To see the simulation of our entire protocol, you can also check out the Python notebooks. Thank you.